Some walked, some drove, but we took the train north. Me and Mama and Daddy got to the station, crack of dawn early, before anyone could see us leave. Daddy holding tight to me with one hand, three tickets to New York in the other. The porter helped us on board, then handed us our bags and our shoebox filled with food and tied with string, onto the first train out of North Carolina. Just as the conductor yelled, "All aboard, New York bound Silver Meteor." Daddy led me to the last seats in the colored car, and let me sit next to the window to watch as the train whistled and chugged, leaving puffs of smoke behind. The conductor shouts, "Next stop, Rocky Mountains." We left in secret before Daddy's boss knew. Before our lease was up, we said our goodbyes to Uncle Buck and Granddaddy and Grandma. Her wet cheek pressed against mine. Ruth Ellen, you mind your mama and daddy, she said. No more picking," Daddy said, mad. "No more work in someone else's land," Mama said, proud. We're, We're gonna, gonna make, make our, our own way, way up, up north. north," they both said. Out the window, I watched Blue Ridge mountains and fields with folks already hunched and picking. Row after row of cotton, tobacco, and peanuts. Every day, except the Lord's Day, just like my granddaddy. But not any more for my daddy. At the next stop, more people and boxes and satchels squeezed into the colored car. So many they stood on tired feet, or sat on hard floors where they were. Pulled out cards to pass the time. I wanted rummy. Daddy at war. In my bag is the book. Teacher pressed in my hands on my last day of school, before we left. Next up, Norfolk, Virginia. In our straight-back seats, when we finish with cards, Mama fusses in her purse. Daddy stares ahead. I take out the book Teacher gave me. The cover's worn, pages too. Read to me, Ruthie. Mama says, and I do. First, the title. Narrative of the life. Of Frederick Douglass. Then I turn to the first page. I was born in Tuckahoe, near Hillsboro, and, and about, about twelve, 12 miles, miles from, from Easton, Easton, in Talbot County, Maryland. Mama listens till her eyes blink long, longer, then close. But I keep on. Next stop, Alexandria, Virginia. Out the window, in between pages, 
I watch as crooked shacks sprout on the edges of fields. Folks wave from their doorways, and I wave back. Mama turns in her sleep, restless and dreaming. All around me, everybody leaving for the north talks in Bible words. Exodus, Egypt, Canaan. Hoping that Chicago, Detroit, and New York City are the promised land. Next up, Washington, D.C. The porters come and move signs, waking Daddy, telling everyone in the colored section to sit where they want. We don't have to stay in front, behind the engine, Breathing in smoke, cause we're past the line that divides black from white, south from north, wrong from right. I wait to move, but we wait more. Finally, Daddy takes my hand, and Mama stands, and we walk down the aisle, out the colored car, and through the curtain. Whites only. Next stop, Baltimore, Maryland. On the other side of the curtain is the dining car with tablecloths and clinking glasses and white faces and good food smells that make my stomach growl and make me wish we hadn't eaten Grandma's fried chicken and hard-boiled eggs and lemon pound cake so soon. Next stop, Newark, Delaware. We walk past row after row of white folks who stare or turn away with eyes that say, keep moving when they see us. Some put hands in empty seats, not here, and we keep walking until we find smiles from new neighbors. Out the window, people turn and point, and I see water, a whole river running along beside us. It's the Delaware River. A mother says to her boy. The book teacher gave me has pages filled with the story of a boy leaving behind what he knew and heading to what he don't, just like me. Only he didn't have a ticket bought by his daddy and food packed by his grandma. So he was cold and hungry, but he kept on running. At night, with only the North Star to guide him along the Chesapeake and the Delaware River in secret, getting help along the way, till he made his way walking to freedom north. Next stop, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I watch the tracks in front of me and behind me, just as far as the eye can see. Mama and Daddy say jobs, education, freedom are waiting in New York for us. And like the boy in the book, we all running from and running to at the same time. <laughs> Last stop, New York City, Penn Station. We step off the train, and I stretch my neck to see bright lights. Tall buildings shimmering against a sky bright as a hundred north stars. Daddy grabs our bags. I squeeze Mama's hand. The other holds tight to my book.
Author's note. After writing about the lives of Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman, I was very familiar with the intricate and elaborate network called the Underground Railroad. But I'd certainly never heard of the Overground Railroad, a term I discovered after reading Isabel Wilkerson's The Warmth of Other Suns. The Overground Railroad refers to the railway system that carried millions of blacks who left the South during the Great Migration. At times, this system was as much a covert operation as the Underground Railroad, as the owners of farms who operated tenant farms, also called sharecropping, used threats of violence and other tactics to prevent workers from leaving. The sharecropping system kept many of its black tenants perpetually in debt to their landlords and made it illegal to leave without permission or before repaying the debts incurred for planting and other supplies. As a result, many blacks departed on trains north under the cover of night or secretly boarded trains miles from home in neighboring towns for the chance at better employment, education, and a life in the north free from oppression. Overground Railroad is inspired by just one of the many stories of people who are running from and running to at the same time. Lisa Klein Ransom. <laughs>